Pretty. Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Porky, the voice of hardcore boxing. But then again, you know that, don't you? Because that's where you're watching. <laughs> Today, I'm joined by Big Viv from the Midlands. How are you doing, Viv? I'm all right, pal Ross. How's things? You good? I'm all right. I, I, I'm getting by. I'm getting by. Can't complain. Yeah. Uh, a lot gone on in boxing since I last seen you. Uh, you've got some questions you want to put to me, haven't you? I have, pal. I have, pal. Shall I fire away? Fire away, then, Viv. Fire away. Let's crack on. All right, cool, pal. So, Eddie Earn has the pick of the middle and super, weight, super <laughs> middleweight division. Why are none of them calling each other out? And in 2022, can you see any of them fighting? Right, I take it you mean Jamie Cox, Billy Joe, Callum Smith, people like that. Yeah. Callum Smith's not going to fight because he's been earning mega dough and, and the mega dough's not there for him at the moment, is it? Because of the pandemic. Mm. And Callum Smith don't, is not a big ticket seller, so he's not really any good to Eddie Earn. Billy Joe... Uh, I think Billy Joe at the moment is more famous for what he's done outside the ring than inside uh, inside the ring. When you look at Billy Joe's record and you look at Callum Smith's record, they're coming towards the they've entered the peak years. They're coming. They're on home straight now. Their careers. They've both been protected. In my opinion, they've both not had the top fights, have they? I mean, who's Callum Smith's best win? Probably the the um, that BSS Super Middleweight Tournament, isn't it? And who Super Cruiserweight. Yeah. Can't remember. George Groves. <laughs> George Groves is his best win. Do we agree? Yeah, he's washed up though, wasn't he? George Groves. George Groves' last fight, and who would George Groves' best win? Did you say James? De James De Gale. Yeah, De Gale. British title. Yeah. So Callum Smith, really, Assen and Dam, Rocky Fielding, and George Groves, and injured George Groves. That's not a fantastic career to say he's got a WBA belt and a Ring Magazine belt. And then we look at Billy Joe, a two-weight world champion. His best career wins probably Andy Lee and Eubank for British. David, yeah, Lemieux, yeah. David Lemieux. We're never going to see a, a, a Billy Joe peak like we did against Lemieux. Lemieux was over three years ago now, wasn't it? Or about three years ago. So, yeah. in three years, he's lost. He'll not get that back now. He'll not get that back now. What is Billy now? 31? Yeah, 30, 31, Lee Powell. He's borrowed time now, isn't he? Jamie Cox, he, he's English-British level. John Ryder's European level. Right? So, are they all going to fight? I'd like to see John Ryder fight Callum Smith. I'd like to see him fight Billy Joe again. I thought that was a close fight, first time at middleweight. I don't want to see Jamie Cox in mix with any of them. Maybe John Ryder, but not in with Billy Joe or Callum Smith. He doesn't deserve it. He's, who's Jamie Cox's best win? I couldn't even tell you myself. Couldn't even tell you myself who Jamie Cox's best win. He's only in mix costs, you know, he's working with them, earning them. So, super middleweight division, in my opinion, is on Skid Row. That's it. They all need Canelo. That's what they need. But Billy Joe's built a career around calling Canelo and Golovkin out. He's been nowhere near them, has he? And then we move on to Callum Smith. He's been a protected fighter, hasn't he? When, WBC, when Callum Smith was WBC number one for about 30 months, he was knocking fights left left, right and centre back. He didn't fight Anthony Dirrell when he should have done, did he? They're all protected no. fighters. They've all got people in their ear holes like Gallagher and other people. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Callum Smith's career has been a total waste of time. He's a great fighter, but when have you ever seen him in a fight where he's been in a fight? You haven't, have we? The thing is, the thing is though, Rush, is he, obviously he's a good fighter, but is he a great fighter? Do you know what I mean? Because John Ryder literally, I don't know, seen that fight, pal. I mean, showed his weaknesses, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he did. 
Yeah, you know. There's loads of weaknesses, but I, I just don't I don't see Callum Smith grabbing the public's imagination. And he's number one on box check in his division. It's a bit the same with jo- Josh Warrington. That that Josh Warrington does loads of tickets and he sells out arenas in Leeds, but he's no good to Eddie Earn at the moment, is he? Because they can't sell tickets, so why would he have Warrington on? The thing though these days, pal, to be a ticket seller, you need to be actually you need to to speak, don't you? You need to talk. Do you know what I mean? If you don't talk, how the hell are you gonna sell tickets? Yeah. Yeah, that's true, yeah. You know. That's true. So yeah, moving on to question two. So Frank and Eddie um need to work with each other to get the best fights on. Can you see it happening? No. They've put three fights on in ten years. So if that were if we were gonna put one a month on for ten years, you'd have hundred and twenty fights, wouldn't you? So yeah. what the other 117 fights. It's all right, Frank Warren coming out now with begging bowl. That dog won't hunt because there's too much water going on that bridge. They won't work with each other at all. At all. Eddie's going to freeze him out. He wants to be the dominant crocodile in the water, doesn't he? So he's going to freeze him out. Um, that, that's basically how it's going to go. But three fights in 10 years, they're just taking piss out of fans, aren't they? Yeah. All yeah. of a sudden, Bricktop wants to work with your old fast car. And fast car, well, his ego's that far gone now. He'll be loving it. He'll just want to crush Warren because they don't like each other. Do they? There's bad blood there between both families. And it is what it isn't. But I don't think they'll work together. They can talk shit and eat as much spaghetti bolognese as they want at these lunch meetings. But you don't need to be at a lunch meeting to make a fight. Pick up the phone, don't you? Or do it on Skype or Zoom. Why? Yeah. I mean, keep saying, no, we can't meet because Eddie's got a virus and this and that. We have Zoom. Like, we're on Zoom now. Or do it on telephone. They don't want to make fights together. I don't think Eddie wants to make them. I think Frank might want to do, but like I said, there's too much water going on that bridge. Too many egos. And that that's the problem in boxing. It's the people around the fighters. The fighters want to fight, don't they? It's just the people around them gassing them up and telling them this and telling them that. At the end of the day, fights need to be made. But it's a bit late in the day for Frank Warren to come out going on about... I can explain it. Going on about wanting to put great fights on and giving lists of 10 fights that he could put on with Eddie Earn. Why haven't they been doing this for the last 10 years? Why? Yeah, yeah, you're right, pal. They've been starving fans. They say that there were a cold war, don't they, between certain promoters in America, Bob Arum and Golden Boy. Cold war? What about, what about the cold war between these two? Three fights in 10 years. It's totally embarrassing. And I think it's a bit rich from Frank Warren to come out doing his Oliver Twist. Please, sir, more, more <laughs> with begging bowl. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm just going to say two words. Fuck off. It's a bit late in the day. Now that we've got a pandemic, they're all scrambling, aren't they? I've just put my time yeah. in now, right? We've got Dave Coldwell in yet another interview. It's like that film in it, 48 hours. Another 48 hours, and then the third instalment, yet another 48 hours. Well, this is like this, isn't it? Yet another Dave Caldwell interview. I mean, constant. It's constant now from the same old people going round. We're going round in circles, aren't we? Don't these YouTube outlets have any other people to interview except the same old 25 people? There's more people in boxing than these same 25. What about these kids turning pro? What about Tommy Frank and Kyle Youssef fighting for a British title next month? Why don't they get them on these channels and make a fuss of them? Make them feel special instead of tickling arseholes at same old people who've got their noses in the same old trough. Am I right? You're right, pal. They just want instant views, though, don't they? Dave you know Caldwell's I mean? got two fighters, hasn't he? Opie Price and Jordan Gill. That's it. So he knows he's got to get his son out there. And these people now 
are starting to annoy me. They're starting to show the true colours for what they are. Because it's like I said the other day in that video, it's every man for themselves now, isn't it? I'm all right. Yeah. I can sit here, me, and just say and do what I want. These people can't. They're all scrambling, aren't they? Because they've got mouths to feed. They've got, they've got no backup plan, have they? Whoring themselves the out. Whores. That's what they are, mate. Whores. Thing is, though, pal, though, most of them millionaires, aren't they? Colwell's not a millionaire. Is he not? No, is he yet. But he's comfortable. Well, it remains got to a be few seen, properties there. If he's not comfortable, yeah. why is he on here all day begging? Why is he trying to steal fighters all the time? I don't know whether it's addicted to fame or what, but I'm sick of seeing these people coming on here. Going, they're doing an interview with one outlet, then they're saying the same thing on another outlet, then the same thing on another, then another. And we're going around in circles here. Because once you've seen it on one programme, why do we need to watch say, the same thing again? You know what I mean? Going on about the same old things, like Bellew's just done some of this, saying Chisora beats Usek. <laughs> She's already too sick. Fucking hell. Do you know, well, that, well, that puts it into perspective about Usek will beat him because when Usek beat him, he was pound for pound best in the world. But now Chisora beats him because he's got to put his Chisora mask on, hasn't he? Because Chisora, well, that's his pal, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like the other day Tony Bell will come out, didn't he? And what did he say? Eddie Earn, there's nobody put as many shows on as Eddie Earn this year. Well, Eddie's put eight on, Warren's put eight, Top Rank has put 36. I think somebody corrected Bellew, and then it, that, what did he do then? He just got his monitor lizard tongue out, didn't he? Uh, and, and backtracked, <laughs> but he still kept doing the monitor lizard. Uh, and I find it embarrassing. In fact, I'm going to read you some out now. Right, I'm going to read you something now, what Macklin put out yesterday on social media. This is Matthew Macklin, one of the Bean Masons. When I mean Bean, Mains, Bean Masons, it's a cult, isn't it? Adam Smith, yeah. he's like the Grim Reaper of the Bean Masons. Then you've got Bellew, Johnny Nelson and Macklin. They're the disciples, aren't they, that put the Bean Mason narratives out. <laughs> and you've got a picture of... Adam Smith, the Grim Reaper, with Glenn McCrory and Jim Watts' heads in his hands. Well, li listen to this from Mr. Matthew Macklin last night. Listen to this. Have a look. Oops. Uh, oh, Here we are. Matthew Macklin with his blue tick. Steve Kim, we know who Steve Kim is, don't we? Big American media uh, boxing guy. Steve Kim says, Virgil Ortez, another blue chip prospect, young contender, is just 22. He's another guy that will be leader of the new school, which is currently led by Tiafimo Lopez. All right. Who for me needs to rematch Lomachenko before we can start? calling him one at no school. But overall, I'm excited about the future of the boxing business. All right. Straight away, Matthew Macklin jumps on that. Right? He weren't tagged into a conversation or anything like that. He's seen this from Steve Kim, who's got a big following. So Macklin, using his promoter's art, jumps straight onto it and puts Lopez, Ortez, Enis, Stevenson, and Boatsy too. Now, okay. Macklin, right? So let's look at it like this. These are the new school. Boatsy's 28 next birthday, yeah? He's 13 and 0. Ortiz is 22 years old. He's 16 and 0. Stevenson's 23 year old and a world champion at 14 and 0. And Enis is 23 year old and 26 and 0. So I was Boatsy in that new school. He's a generation away from these guys, five year older. And he's had less fights than them all. And he's just gone life and death with a guy who you'd say was English level. So I was Boatsy in that school with them. Boatsy to me is another Audley Harrison. He did well at Olympics, but he ain't going to win a world title. So 
how's Boatsy? But Matthew Macklin has to come out with stuff like that, doesn't he? Because he's employed by Sky, so he's got to be a monitor lizard. He's got to be. He's got to keep his position in the Bean Masons, hasn't he? Macklin, you should be embarrassed coming out with things like that. But that stuff like that is what Bellew comes out with and Barker and people like that, Spencer Oliver and Johnny Nelson. They come out with things like that and what they do, they show themselves up, Viv. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it becomes cringe. You see it. I've I, I, I sent it to people right now. I know who've been champion boxers and they've, they just sent me a picture back like that of people who've trained champions. As if to say, it's cringe. Stuff like that makes my blood boil, mate. Macklin's not worth a cup of cold piss, mate, as far as I'm concerned. Coming out with stuff like that. But they made a big thing about him at the weekend. Not being biased. You know, in the Ritz and Vasquez fight. Mm. You see that fight? Saw so little bits of it, right. not much of it. Well, though. they made a big thing about Macklin picking Vasquez as the winner, right? He's narrating the story on the commentary, but yeah, Vasquez, Vasquez did win, but in my opinion as well. But Macklin has only went that way because he knew after his last performance when everybody said about him that he couldn't be as biased. Did you notice how they went the total other way from being biased to non-biased? Although I did think Vasquez won, but not as wide as he had it. But you see where I'm coming from? And now they're making a big issue when they're talking about it. Bean and Macklin, every time they pipe up now, they're talking in interviews about how, how non-biased they are. They keep making an issue about we're not biased. Uh, because look what we're saying here about Ritson, and Ritson is a matchroom fighter. No, 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 no. Ritson is not a matchroom fighter. Ritson is an MTK fighter. He can go on any show he wants. So let's just get that into perspective. Matthew Macklin and Adam Smith. Ritson is not a matrimon fighter. Get your facts right and stop telling lies. Go on, what's the next question? So the next question is... Tyson Fury is the most active boxer on social media. Are the fans ever are the fans ever going to get sick of him? Uh, well, Tyson's not fought since February, but he's got friends on YouTube and friends on boxing websites and things like that, and they're putting stuff, fake stuff out every day. And 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 what it does, it creates storylines, doesn't it? For example, his dad put something out in some newspaper, didn't he, saying that I'm John Fury, I'm an hard fighting man. And I fought for hundred thousand pounds in a bare knuckle fight. <laughs> Didn't happen. If it did happen, where's the footage? Who did you fight? Who was the fair play referee? And how many people watched it? And why has nobody come forward? That's just one little lie. I'm not going to go in deep on John Fury because he's not my cup of tea. But when you're spreading shit like that, that's what it is. Shit, right? You have to get rid of shit because it leaves stains. When you're spreading shit like that and putting it into some newspaper, all these gimps from Beanville Island, they believe it all and they go on social media and they spread the word. And what happens is, once they spread the word, everybody thinks it's true. But John Fury's never had a fight for £100,000 in his life. He's had two fights, bare knuckle. One got stopped because uh, they were both knackered and other one, Police turned up. That's the facts. So where's, where's all this about four for 100 grand? It, it's utter madness. But what these people do, they're growing a man's reputation there that's not true. You see where I'm coming from? Yeah. And Was he ever, was he, was, was he, was he ever um, respected as a bare-knuckle fighter, um, John Fury? Well, I've never, heard, I've never heard of him being a bare-knuckle fighter. Just if you have a straightener with somebody, does that mean you're a bare-knuckle fighter? Well, well let's, I've had straighteners with people. Am I a bare-knuckle fighter? No. So what, if you're a traveller and you have a straightener, does that mean you're a bare-knuckle fighter? No. I don't think it does. But it's easy to grow somebody's reputation, isn't it? By just putting something out and manipulating the media, and that's what these people do. They're manipulating the media because they've got the followers, aren't they? 
Look, for example, you get these YouTubers, they go up to see John Fury, don't they? They do an interview with him, don't they? That Umar. And I've heard back that Umar's gone up there, done an interview and been pissing himself on the way home with the knackers that he's heard. <laughs> right? But he's not going to mention it in the middle of the interview, is he? <laughs> and I've heard back off a couple of people, right? Coogan as well. But they're not going to say anything. They're just going to sit there listening to it. Because they know it's car crash and they know it's going to get views. But he's such a shit. It's like watching them interviews on Sean Atwood, isn't it, with Brian Cockrell? Have you seen them Brian Cockrell interviews? <laughs> I've seen them Brian Cockrell interviews. Them fans want to meet you, innit? It's fucking load of shit. Load of shit. People are just coming out and talking loads of shit. You sell a few tenner bags of weed, all of a sudden you pop up at the bar. You have a chase off it, please. You know, and that Brian Cockrell, you know, please chase him. And he said, but I got away from him because I'm a group N rally driver. And, and, and the story just it blows out of control. And before you know where you are, these people are being given a platform, aren't they? It's a disease. Yeah. These people are a disease. You know, all cure <laughs> I'm the fucking cure, Porky. If they want to uh, take me on, they can come on here. And I'll put them straight, but it's a load of shit. They're telling stories about people that are dead and adding bits on because these people... Oh, load of shit. And do you know what? I think sooner or later, I think I'll just wash my hands of social media because... I've never heard so much shit since I were in prison myself. Because every time you get a pad, mate, they all drive Porsches and they own big houses. And when you go to meet, when you get out, they're living in a fucking bed sit with a bus pass. A lot half of it's shit, right? It's amazing what people can come out with when they get in front of a camera. Load of shit. It's just people talking bollocks. So, what shocked me though, pal, is how, how, how they get away with it and nobody calls them out. That's what I well, can't get mad about. John Fury, or they all got him down as some fucking big killer, aren't they? Yeah. Nobody's going to tell him, are they? Because they all want access to him, don't they, to get views because he's the world heavyweight champion's so, uh, dad. So no yeah, one's yeah. up on it, are they? No, he won't talk that shit in front of me because I won't have it. I don't listen to shit like that in my company. <laughs> and I know other people that know him that won't listen to shit like that. But yeah. YouTubers like Omar and Coogan, they're there like that, aren't they, with microphone? Oh, yeah, what happened then, John? Well, yeah. Oh, God, man. <laughs> you with Spartans. Do you see where I'm coming from? It's just shit, yeah. talking, isn't it? It's talking shit for the sake of it. I've just, I've just heard six years of it in Sheffield. We've got some at bubbling. We're talking shit. I don't want to hear any <laughs> shit. I don't want to hear any more shit talk. Because that's what it all is, isn't it? Shit. Utter shit. I don't want to hear it. Talking knackers. I don't want to hear people good. talking knackers in my company. Go away <laughs> from me. Don't come in my company. Say you're going to do something and then don't do it. Messers and shit talkers. I've no time for them. But go on then. What's the next question? Uh, again, Tyson Fury, WBC, Ring Magazine, Lionel Champion. Next opponent, potentially Caballero. Good opponent or shocking? Uh, well, they're not going to want to risk him, are they? Because he's got the Joshua fight coming up. But Tyson will take Caballero to score. He's tailor-made for him. He'd, yeah, he'd yeah. And get I, I agree. With best technical heavyweight on planet, wouldn't he? And he'd, he'd get busted up, I think. I think Tyson would bust him up down home straight. Uh, yeah. would, I think Tyson, I don't think he'd jump on him. But I think, because he's technically better than Wilder. Wilder weren't technically able to hang with Fury, were he? But he had no. to be very careful with Wilder in case he got caught. But I think that if he fights Caballero, uh, Tyson takes him to school or university and busts him up eight, and eight nine, ten rounds. I think it'd be another Chisora job. So, yeah. And then, obviously, they're going to try and get the Joshua fight because... They all know they don't know what's happening with this pandemic, and all their arseholes are squeaking, aren't they? Because they all need the yeah. fix, don't they? They all need the money fix, and there's all everybody around them wants to get eat, wants to eat, and everybody around them wants to get themselves on YouTube, don't they? And talk a load of shit. Because that's what it's all about. Now it's not boxing; it's just talking shit. Dot com. WWE, isn't it? WWE, shit, utter shit, lies, bullshit. Yeah. Next question. Uh, <clears throat> Dave Allen, headlining, has a winner of belts. 
the people in the boxing industry think he's lucky? Well, obviously, people in the industry think he's lucky, but he's worked his ticket, hasn't he? I remember when I lived at, uh, he lived at back of me a few years ago, and uh, I remember speaking to him outside house, and I said, what you need to do, you need to get your son on that Twitter and social media, and I could see him absorbing what I was telling him, I'm fucking hell, and he did, didn't he? But uh, a detriment, that uh, he couldn't get up in the morning because he's on there all night, you see, and he can't get up in the morning and do his runs. <laughs> So really, he didn't get the most out of his talents because when he were, when he was with Dennis, uh, I think after he'd had about five fights with Dennis, he was all right. All right. I think I think in his seventh fight he drew, and I think that's where and and, and this this split up. Then I don't think he was as dedicated as he were at the beginning, and he didn't get the most out of his talents. He's winged it really. You've only really seen a thirty five percent of Dave Allen now. Every time he's got a fight coming up, we hear a different narrated story, don't we? Mm. We hear a different narrated story, and it's basically just he's running out of stories now. We've had the suicide, we've had the drink, we've had the gambling, we've had the mental health, we've had the I got caught. We, we the, you name it, we've fucking heard it, and we? we've had the my washing machine's broken. I've got an house full of fucking lodgers. We've had it up. We've heard it all, haven't we, now? And now yeah. we've got... I'm taking it serious. I'm sparring Usek. He's pound for pound. Look, we know what it is, don't we? It's a, it's a load of people talking a load of shit trying to get a few quid. But what we've, what, we've, what we've not heard from him is why he knocked back a quarter of a million pounds to fight the bar and then asked for 350. People forget that. Yeah, it were money and tickets and that. But if he's this big ticket seller, that's as good as money, in it? Am I right? Yeah, yeah. Supposed to be yeah a big you're right, mate. Seller. So, we've, he's not Yui Fury fight back, even though Peter and Yui offered him 25 grand of their purse just to get Yui out. So, basically, he's been a fool to himself. I don't know who's advising him, but since he's gone to MTK, he's not had a fight yet. And he's just had Aimer pull out now. And there's, as of today, Thursday, 12 o'clock, there's there's no Tom Boxrick for him yet. And the slip Savannah Marshall in that show now. So she's got to be paid in a world title fight. There'll be sanctioning fees to pay for WBO as well. So Dave might miss out on this show now. I hope he doesn't. I hope he gets out. But And if he does miss out, we'll get what you'll see then is. He might, they might all fall out if he don't get out. And um, he'll probably be hanging out at the back of Frank Warren then trying to get Gorman fight because he's got to eat, hasn't he? He's not going to go get a job, is he? That is, you know, you know, so he's got to eat. So what you'll do then, you'll see him go to hang around Frank Warren scene. And that's the nature of the beast, I'm afraid. That's the nature yeah. of the beast. And we've all seen how Rufus Eddie Earn is, haven't we? Yeah, when he's yeah. not bothered about you as a fighter, he moves on. He's an ice man. He's a he's a businessman, and he has to have that mindset. Yeah, he might feel that he might feel sorry for you, but Eddie's thinking of the big bigger picture, and the bigger picture for him is pound notes. I mean, we all heard that Eddie were close to Smiths and all that. Well, what has he done for Callum and Liam? He not delivered them a world title, has he? No. Callis Howland got Callum World title and Liam's one. Frank Warren got him. He also got him Canelo. He's not delivered Billy Joe a world title, has he? Eddie. No. Nah. Frank Warren delivered him too. He didn't deliver Warrington a world title, did he? He can't get John Ryder a fight. Martin J. Ward. What what so and these are all his fighters, and uh, my fighters are like my family, Eddie said, didn't he? Well, show us that they're like your family then. Show us. Can't. He can't, he can't do it because if you're thinking at bottom line all the time, which is the pound note, and there'll be casualties. And let me tell you this, there's going to be more casualties as well and more fallouts. So keep watching it unfold. Go on, the next question. Charles Martin is supposed to fight Pule's repl um, to be Pule's replacement if he pulls out. Do you think the fans will buy into the AJ versus Martins? How can Eddie sell that? Is that Charles Martin who John Fury said he'd flog? 
Collier, basically. Uh, that's another one, John Fury, we're going to flog. Wilder, Charlie Martin, Bellew, David A, Mike Tyson, Lennox Lewis, Evander Holderfield, Mickey Theo. That's eight people John Fury is going to flog. He's not thrown a punch yet. Uh, Charlie Martin. He's not worth a cup of cold piss, is he? No. Uh, he mean... is in English level. If 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 the if pool left pulls out with coronavirus or, or 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 a broken stub toe or summer or I don't know gangrene in his cock whatever whatever he's got pool left if he pulls out that fight right and IBF slip Charlie Martin in it's mandatory and Eddie comes out and goes well what it is cool because it's mandatory in it we've got we've worked hard for these belts no you haven't worked hard for them belts the Tyson Fury's belts but. Charlie Martin against Joshua. Who was going to fucking buy into that load of shit? Hey, is that him who walks the earth like a god? Because that's what he said, didn't he? Charlie Martin. I'm going to do a John Fury and said I'd flog Charlie Martin. <laughs> so I wouldn't want to see that, mate. And that won't be a pay per view for me. No. No. You'd be surprised, though, what the fans will buy, though, these days. Yeah, because that, because the. They're all part of the Bean Mason cult, aren't they, from Beanville Island? <laughs> <coughs> and also, as well, I was going to say, um, so, regarding Joshua, um, in most of his um, career, he has fought B-class opponents. Taka, Molina, Brazil, Martin, if, well, I'd say C-class. Um, isn't it about time? I was going to say Charles Martin, B-class, but I think it's C-class. Um, isn't it about time the fans demanded he face young lions, Yoka, Hergovic, Dubois, Joyce, Magovic, Magovic as well? Sorry, yeah, yeah. Joyce is older than Joshua, though. I know, but he's got no miles on the clock, has he? Yeah, he's had a long amateur career, though. It's still miles, isn't it? His body's still older, and his skeleton muscles still, still that of a 35 year old, isn't it? I think, I think he'll give, I think he'll give me a good fight. Well, well, we'll see, won't we? I don't think personally, so, though, but I don't know. I mean, they're not going to put Joshua in with a banger, are they? That's Yoker's a banger, isn't he? Ask Dave Allen. He's been talking mm. like Riddick Bow since he fought Yoker. Uh, Yoker's a banger. Magovic's a banger. Ergovic's a banger. Joyce, Joyce is a banger. David Price is a banger. None of them are going to get to get sat with Joyce, with Joshua. Sorry, David Price already dropped him with twenty ounce gloves on in Sheffield. So, so I, I don't personally think that they're going to put Joshua near any danger, unless it's massive, massive money. Uh, that's why they didn't want to go near Wilder, innit? When they were offered all that money, so they've got to protect Joshua's chandelier chin, haven't they? Yeah, he has um, well, muscles Joshua's... on your body, can't you? But you can't put them on that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, but Joshua already has two um, world champion wins on his um, record. Is that good enough for someone of Joshua's brand? You are. I says Joshua has beat two world champions. Is that good enough for someone of Joshua's brand? Joshua, so the way they're more obviously... than two world champions, he's beat Povetkin, Vladimir, Charlie Martin, uh, Ruiz. I'm sure he's beat another one as well. Yeah, but you can't really. Martin, world champion. Would you would you class that as a world champ? As well, a, as no, a world champion, really? I, in record books, he had a world title. He defended it, so he's your first one. Your second one. Povetkin, ain't is he? Because Povetkin, Povetkin, he had regular one. He still a world champion, isn't it? Still classed as a world champion. Vladimir, that's three. Parker, four. Ruiz, five. Joshua's beat five world champions. So he's beat Tyson Fury, he's only beat three, hasn't he? Wilder, Vladimir, and Cunningham. So who's got the best CV? You'd have to say Joshua, wouldn't you? But would you say that's would you say would you only say that's based on world champions though? The fact that, like you just said, if he's beat five world champions, whatever, would you just class it because of that? If you know what I'm saying, or would you Wilder's got a one trick pony, isn't he? Right. Vladimir. Good trick though. Vladimir, right. Fury stunk place out against Vladimir, didn't he? He did what he had to do to get the win. It's sweet science, yeah, I understand. But Joshua knocked him out, didn't he? But it was 18 months after, so you probably have to say 
Fury got there first, and Fury took Wilder fight, but really, I don't know. There's no in it between them both, is there really? But you'd have to shade it for Fury, wouldn't you, on a points win in a school? Yeah. You'd have to shade it for Fury to beat him on points, Joshua. But as regards the CVs, he's been more active and he's had more world title fight. I mean, Tyson Fury's not had a defense of a belt yet, has he? No. He's not defended a world title yet. He keeps walking around with that goat hat on, but he hasn't had a defense of a world title. He's won two world title fights. That's it. Jamie McDonald's won more. Do you think he wants to defend his belt, so if if that well, makes sense? Pounds now, Annie Tyson. He could exactly. go out now yeah. if he wanted to, and be known and, and tell everybody he's a goat. But the 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 sceptics are saying, "Well, you've not had a defense of a belt, and you've only won two world title fights." It's his own fault that he's only had two world title fights because he went off at rails, didn't he? But and now we've got this pandemic, so he hadn't had the best of luck, Tyson. But I think he could go on a run if he wanted to, and probably the only person who will beat him out this year is. Probably himself until the bar, you know, gets a bit more mature and you know there's that um so, sorry, I was gonna ask you as well, because obviously you know and you obviously mentioned Joseph Parker as, as a world champion, obviously that Joshua beat. That was a vacant belt, wasn't it? With um against Ruiz, wasn't it, in New Zealand? Well yeah, what you mean Ruiz? Yeah, yeah. So when Parker obviously got that belt, it was because it was vacant and he wasn't it? Yeah, but it was he, vacant. he defended it, didn't he? Yeah, Huey Fury won it. Yeah, yeah, and and then obviously, which, and then obviously, he lost it to Joshua, didn't he? Ruiz ended up beating Joshua, and then Joshua beat Ruiz, so that was his fifth. Joshua's beat five world champions, which is a record not to be sniffed at, isn't it? I know he's been manoeuvred through choppy waters, and they've swerved everybody. Went, you know, all they should have fought and waited it out and stuff like that. And they're probably doing this with Tyson Fury now. They're probably going to try and wait it out and hope that it goes off at rails or... I don't know. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, Joshua and Tyson Fury have been protected. Because when you look at Tyson's record, it was offered at Vladimir fight in 2012, but they knocked it back, didn't they? His team yeah. waited it out until Vladimir got older. Another three years. Three years a long time in boxing. I mean, look at Billy Joe now. Look how he performed against Lemieux. Forward three years. He's not like that now, is he? Well, we haven't seen him perform in ages, have we? And this is why I get angry at all these Mike Tyson fans. Look how Mike Tyson performed in 2004 against uh, Danny Williams and Kevin McBride. Well, forward 16 year. And... Everybody's saying that he's he's gonna do this and gonna do that. He's gonna do wonders. All he's done is shit cucumbers. It's hype, in it. We've got YouTube, yeah. social media can hype it all up. <coughs> Who's Mike Tyson's best three wins? He beat nine world champions. Who's his best three wins? Best three wins. Larry Holmes, two year out at game, age thirty eight. You give him that one, wouldn't you? Yeah, Michael Spinks, a career light heavyweight. That's two. Who would you say third one is? Tony Tucker or Frank Bruno? That's it. Yeah, yeah. It's really eight world champions because he beat he beat Bruno twice, but nine victories over eight world champions. So it is what it is, isn't it? You'd say Razor Ruddock's a good win, but he didn't win a world title. He would if he were around today. But reputation went before him, didn't he, on Mike Tyson? He hasn't got an elite win. When he fought Lennox Lewis in Holyfield, he were found wanting, wasn't he? Yeah. But then again, you've got hype, haven't you? And people can hype people up to be King Kong like they did Joshua. Look what happened. Do you think that'll happen again with Joshua? Yeah, where it like will, it will happen again, yeah. I, be, I believe it will happen again for the simple reason. Joshua didn't show me anything in Saudi Arabia to suggest that he's over that first kicking. He fought like a frightened yeah. rabbit. And that's why I think that Tyson Fury beats him. You reckon a points decision, don't you? I reckon a points decision, yeah, because Tyson won't take many risks with Joshua because Joshua's a bit technically better than Wilder. So I think he'll just go back to being Fury and fumble his way through to a schooling like he did Vladimir. And then they'll have rematch and it'll be the same again. 
So, you know, obviously when Team Fury, when I keep saying, obviously, Wilder's better than Joshua and all this, do they actually really believe that when they're no, saying they that, don't. do you think? They know the boxing, don't they? Tyson does. Anyway. Yeah. No, I don't believe that now. I think they're just saying that to rubbish Joshua. Joshua's a bit better than what people make out, but he's maybe a bit fragile now after that Ruiz loss. So, yeah. Well, yeah, so question? next question then. Um, Dubois, Joyce, why is Frank saying it's for the fans for non-pay-per-view? Uh, well, he wasn't saying that in March, was he? He was saying it's pay-per-view and it's two juggernauts and the best of the best and this and that. And now because of the pandemic, he's saying, no, oh, we're going to do it non-pay-per-view. That's because they just want to get something on the telly. But they'll subsidise the wages on it from a Fury pay-per-view in December. But I believe that if Fury fights in December and it's not Wilder, I believe we're going to see some court action. That's what I believe. I don't yeah. think Al Heyman and Shelley Finkel will take it on chin. So get ready. You reckon it's going to be court? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, they're not going to let a fight. Americans are not just going to roll over and take that lying down. Al Heyman's Harvard graduate lawyer, isn't he? So yeah, he is. not just going to take that on chin, are they? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. So, so get ready. That's what I think. So and I see some falling outs down the line. I see Frank Warren and Tyson Fury in court going at it eventually. I mean, they all go at it with Frank in end, don't they? Tyson will know this. He's a student of the game. So he'll, he'll be ready for it. But I see him getting at it in court, Tyson Fury and Frank Warren. So sure as eggs are eggs, they're going to get at it in a court of law. Do you think if um, in 2021, if Wilder fights in Fury, do you think it's a career-wrecking decision? Yeah, I think Tyson's got his number now, hasn't he? Yeah, yes, I think so as well. <sighs> yeah. Also as well, um, do you think Eddie will ask for Wilder fight if he faces Fury and loses for Joshua? Will Eddie ask for Wilder fight if Fury beats Joshua? Well, no, if Fury, if Fury beats Wilder, sorry. If Fury beats Wilder, uh, do you think he'll go? Yeah, yeah, do you think he'll go running? Yeah, I think that. Uh, I think it's possible that Eddie Earn is going to want to fight Fury twice with Joshua and Wilder twice. He knows he's got four paydays there and possibly a Dylan White. So Eddie Earn will be sat at home and thinking, I've got five more massive, massive f- nights with Joshua over the next two or three years, and then I'm out of boxing. That's what he'll be thinking, right? He was thinking 20% of them five nights is, is a 100%. That's like having a, having a fight myself and having all the money, that, if you had it up in it. So Eddie yeah. Earn, he's probably got three years left in boxing. And then he'll all go because they're not bringing anybody through, are they? Who are they bringing through? Oh, oh, oh. From the last Olympics, a Boatsy and a Coley, you wouldn't open curtains to watch them, would you? <laughs> would you pay to watch Lawrence Coley? No chance. <laughs> right. Would you pay to watch Boatsy? Nah. Would you Would you sit up and say, hey, here, get tuned into IFL. There's an interview with a Coley and Boatsy on. You won't, would no. you? They don't do numbers on IFL. And Eddie will know all this. He's not daft. He's a numbers man. So I don't see anybody coming through from that 2016 Olympic team. And I think Eddie's probably thought, they fluked it with Joshua. Let's just ride it out now and then get out of here. Because why would they want to be losing money on shows when they've been making millions? So I'd look at Eddie and getting out of boxing and making his son into some game show host or some or doing something like Family Fortunes or the Eddie, the Eddie Earns show. You know, something like the Jonathan Ross show. He's trying to go corporate into show business. And that's why he brought a book out. Look, if he were to buy a chocolate, he'd eat himself, wouldn't he, Eddie? Eddie's, yeah. Eddie's getting himself out there for life after boxing in the next three years. So watch this space. Remember this video, Vern, uh, Viv, sorry. I, I think he's going to stay in boxing. I think yeah, it just I don't. Different. I don't. Why? Why would you want to stay in boxing when you've been having it? Ego. All the time? Ego. What? Losing money? Yeah. Shows? Ego. Come on, Eddie's a numbers man. Accountants by name. Accountants by nature. 
Every time he loses on the show, he bitches like a little girl. True. Yeah, but that's the thing. I think a lot of promoters lose money. Like, do you know what I mean? Obviously, you know, I'm sure Mick Hennessy, Dennis has probably lost a load of money on his shows. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's still, they're still in the game, aren't they? So, like you said, it's an, it's an ego thing. And I think as well, deep down, they actually do enjoy boxing, you know? Maybe, maybe. But I don't think um, he'll be like when Joshua goes. Yeah, true. Money's not there, is he? No, no. Um, next question. So, Liam Williams and Willie Hutchinson and a new addition to the Ingle team, Bradley Skeets, what's next for their careers? Padding the records out. That's what Ingle's doing, it? Dominic Ingle. They don't put anybody in, 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 near any risks, do they? Who's Dominic Ingle's best win as a trainer? He's been training 20 years now, hasn't he? Who's his best win? Tell me Dominic Ingle's top five wins in 20 years as a trainer. Lemieux? <laughs> David Lemieux, that's one. The one we Kel, the one we Kel. There's one we Kel that there was Porter. a really good win. That's the one. Two. Who else can you tell me? I can't tell you anymore. There you, honest, yeah, no. there you go. So what's he been doing 20 years? Looking at mirror. <laughs> what's he been doing 20 years? Is that two wins? I said, so well, what, what's he, what has he been doing with his fighters 20 years if he's got two wins like that? If he were a, if he were a, a chief executive of a company, he'd have been sacked, wouldn't he, by now? Yeah. He's got more drug this... test failures than top wins on his record. <laughs> well, he's got, you just named me two wins that Dominic Ingalls got there, Lemieux and Porter, right? But yet he's had three fighters fail dope tests. If he gets a fourth failing a dope test, will he hand his license in? No. Will area council do him? Not we. No, because his because his mum's on. Mum's on the board, is she? Yeah. There you go. So it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I don't see. Tony, but... any, I don't see him doing anything. Bradley Key, Bradley Ski shot to bits. He's finished. Uh, Williams, I like him, but. He's just been in a, a fight with somebody, British title defence, and it, it, it were one to sixty six to win. What? And it lasted around. Yeah, yeah. So what were all that about? The other kids, thirteen and 0, 12 of them have got losing records. That's where we're at with him. That's the bottom line. We're we're we'll being told Willie Hutchinson's this, Willie Hutchinson's that. Thirteen and 0, 12 have got losing records. That's padded. His 14th will be a padded one as well. Watch this space. Liam Williams, getting back to Liam Williams. He's an on-top fighter. When he gets hit, he looks for a way out. We saw it against Beefy Smith, didn't we? Mm, yeah, we did, actually. That's true. Jury's out on Liam Williams. I'm not going to be harsh on him because he's been knocking everybody out since he's gone to Dominic. But who has he knocked out that's any good? Not been no anybody any good, have they? No. There you go. So we can't judge him yet. Jury's out. And getting into a number one position with WBO with Frank Warren behind you. Well, that's not hard, is it? That. Nah. You got Tommy Warren's Langford boxing position, didn't he? You got Tommy Langford to that position, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. And you want you'd have him down as English level, wouldn't you? Probably, yeah, you probably would, to be fair. You would, yeah. Yeah. I know this sounds harsh, and if anybody's got a problem when we're talking harsh like this, I don't give a fuck. Because I dare say it, but I'm only saying what fighters, managers, promoters, trainers say every single day to the mates in pub or to people in gym. But they won't fucking say it on YouTube, will they? And I'm only saying what Coogan, Umar, Rob Tebbert, Dave Allen and all the rest of them say behind closed doors. But they won't come and say it on YouTube, will they? Because they've got no assholes. Yeah, go on. What's the next question? Uh, Bell you and um, Aura Davis spat. Is it for effect or is it genuine dislike to, towards each other? 
Bellew and O'Hara Davis. I don't think O'Hara likes him. I don't think Bellew likes O'Hara. Bellew caused him a lot of problems behind the scenes, ringing Eddie Earn up constantly, saying, have you seen what O'Hara has said? He's going to do an interview with the Sun. We don't like the Sun in Liverpool. Well, O'Hara wouldn't have known that because the tragedy that was Hillsborough, that happened in Sheffield, by the way, not Liverpool, uh, that happened before O'Hara were born. So... I don't, I don't get it why they all jumped on Awara's back. So Eddie had to be seen to be to act, didn't he? But when push come to push, he asked him to stay. But Awara went and got offered a better deal with Warren and MTK. So good luck to Awara Davis. I've met him, had a good chat with him in Leeds when I, when me and Dennis went there night before Wallington Selby fight. I think he's a nice guy, Awara Davis, and. And all that, what Matchroom had him doing on social media to get him out there, dyeing his hair blonde. Barry Earn had him dye his hair blonde. Barry Earn, Jesus. What? Awara went, went and dyed his hair to be different, and it were yellow, on it? Do you remember? You did, what? So, get, yeah. let, let me get this straight. Barry Earn asked O'Hara Davis to dye his hair yeah. blonde. Yeah, to create, what? To create a character, because he said... Oh... Well, go God speak to O'Hara Davis about it. It's a true story. He said, well, what we need to do, O'Hara, we need to sell you. You know, like we did with snooker players. We had Jimmy Whirlwind White, Steve Interesting Davis, Dennis Big Glasses Taylor. So we need to do something with you, O'Hara. So go do something. Go dye your hair or something. So O'Hara, being the good Samaritan, went and did it, didn't he? I think Barry Ann was taking the piss out of him when he said yeah, that. Been, when O'Hara would have walked back to Jim finishing his session, yeah, you know, they're going in the car, they've been pissed laughing. <laughs> Blonde hair. <laughs> go on YouTube, go on O'Hara Davis's profile on Wikipedia and go look at him when he dyed his hair blonde. He looked a right cunt. <laughs> He's a nice, he's a nice, he's a nice guy though. He's got a black man walking about with his hair dyed, but it went yellow. Go have a look. Go have a look. You couldn't make it up, could you? You couldn't make it up. Barry Earnley, the self-confessed slave trader, he looked home that night and said to his wife, "Yeah, I'm just. What you been up to today, then, Bazza? Oh. Well, I told that O'Hara Davis to go dye his hair, so he did, and he ended, and it went yellow. The melt." He'd have been laughing the heads off. Yeah, yeah. He had Eric, Co- Eric coaching. Barry Earn told Eric coaching to go get a pair of sunglasses. And he said, I don't know which ones to pick. So Barry Earn told him which ones. And Eric coaching were walking about with a pair of sunglasses on that Elvis had wear. You remember them? <laughs> you remember them? Harry coaching sunglasses that he were walking about in. Yeah, yeah, any yeah, coaching, yeah, O'Hara and Connor Ben. <laughs> Connor Ben went out and got covered in tattoos. <laughs> it's a true story, mate. Honestly, any coaching walked into Matt June Gym one day in a pair of Elvis and a pair of Elvis sunglasses. It's a true story, mate. Honestly, it's a famous boxing story. God, I tell you what, Barry Earn, man. Jesus, I know. Honestly, yeah, I mean, you meet characters, don't you, in boxing? But that's a famous story Eric Oaching walking around a black Elvis. <laughs> We're a black Elvis, mate. <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> Honestly, I swear to God, we couldn't make it up. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> um, I think that's too fair though. With O'Hara, like you said, he, he just come across as a genuine nice guy and stuff. Do you know what I mean? And he, he's very relatable. Yeah. Um, but I just think, uh, how can I put it? I think he's. I think in the past he's been very gullible and very naive. Do you know what I mean? Um, because when you watch his interviews, like when you watch his interviews back then, and when you watch them now, you can see the maturity in him as a person. Do you know what I mean? I think you can. Um. So yeah. Hey, go on. What else? What's the next question? Next question. Yeah. So. Uh, Kel Brook and Crawford. Can you see Kel putting in a performance of a lifetime and beating Crawford? No, I don't. I see Kel Brook hanging in there for six or seven rounds and towel coming in. That's what I see yeah. happening. And I think it's a shame, but I hope he wins. Uh, 
I think it'll be good for his trainer, Ryan Rhodes and Adam Etchitz, if they win, because it'll put them on map and propel them. So they'll be putting they'll be putting some hard work in. But uh, I, I don't think Kel can be inactive like that and then go mix it with Crawford, who's a, who is a surgeon, isn't he, Crawford? He's a technician and a surgeon, isn't he? Uh, yeah. I think that every time Kel Brook's been in with somebody who's been good, he's, he's looked for a way out. Well, he's lost, his two losses prove that, don't they? Well, yeah, yeah. But... Um, is. I don't, but what I will say is this Kel Brook could have been the greatest weight well to work we've ever had, and also Eddie Earns a shit house and Frank Warren's a shit house for not getting that fight bought and putting some money in Kel Brook's prop pocket. A pound for pound guy fighting a British former world champion who spilt his guts for Frank Warren and Eddie Earn, and yet they can't deliver for him. What's all that about? Hey. Eh? Forget what's going on in the past. What about the fucking fans that want to watch the boxing? Eh? They can serve up shit with Chisora, nine losses on pay-per-view against Usek, who's only had one fight as an heavyweight, and it's for no fucking belt. That can be an headline on pay-per-view, but yet they can't get Kelbrook Crawford on just normal television, non-pay-per-view. Are you having a fucking laugh? Am I a fucking lollipop? Eh? Do I look like a lollipop? Fucking all my legs wet because Eddie Earn just pissed all down it and brick top. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's not good, is it? No, not good at all. So Lomachenko against Lopez, best fight at year. It peaked at four million on ESPN, but yet nobody from UK bought it for us to watch, did they? But no, I didn't. They'll be asking for pay per view for Tyson Fury Caballel, won't they? Yeah, yeah. They want pay per view for that, but they won't fucking give us Lopez against Lomachenko. Two of the best of the best going at it for all the marbles. You're having a fucking laugh, aren't you? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, next question? Yeah, go on then, yeah. Sorry, um, Dennis Hobson stable is weak. Can you see him making a statement in 2021? Who is the best fighter to watch in Dennis's stable and who's the weak, uh, who's the least that you don't like watching? Uh, Dennis is stable. Uh, I'm not going to go too deep on this. Josh Wales, best fighter he's got. He's only one with a belt that's worth it, that's a decent belt. Uh, and, and and the guy Josh beat with 28 and one. So he's best fighter Dennis has got. But his contract's up in March, April. Uh, Josh hadn't fought since February. So will Josh fight with Dennis again? Maybe. I don't know. It depends on a lot of logistics behind the scenes. But Josh's best fighter Dennis has got. What were other question? Well, the question was um, the, the obviously the least person that you don't like watching, so maybe you uh, might go for it. Well, I'm not going to say I don't like watching because I like watching all kinds of boxing, but I don't know. Perry Howe. I don't, I don't. Perry Howe sells a lot of tickets, doesn't he? He's a lorry driver, he's ex army. But I, don't, I think he's probably least talented out of all of them, but he sells tickets, so nobody's going to tell him that, are they? But I like Perry. Yeah, he's exactly. a nice person, but I don't think he wins a belt. I don't think he's got a chance of winning a belt. The best prospect that Dennis has got is Kane Salvin, in my opinion. He's a quiet kid trained by Glyn Rhodes. He doesn't say much. He's best prospect Dennis has got, in my opinion. He's a really nice kid, and he fights Suffy on... 20th of November for uh, I think I think it might be for a belt that is it area title belt I'm not sure but uh, as regards signings well this is who, who who's Dennis's signed since I've known him Robin Reed never did anything with him Frankie Gavin made a world title for him it collapsed after two, with two weeks to go uh, I'm not going to detail why it collapsed 
and Josh Whale, the people that I got Dennis to sign. Uh, and Josh Whale delivered the belt, so he's he's the best one, isn't he? Technically, yeah, made me yeah. look good, didn't he? And Dennis really and Crum didn't want to sign Josh. I don't think he's got eleven eleven defeats, blah blah blah. So yeah, but when you look at his record, he could quite easily have five defeats because he's always been yeah. a way fighter. So and it's and it worked out all right. It worked good for Dennis and it worked good for Josh. But they haven't kicked on have they since Feb, mainly because of the pandemic. Let's hope that Josh gets out this year in some in a, in a title fight, which I'm hearing that they're working on. So that's good. But signings. Well, I told Dennis after one month of working with him, you need signings, Dennis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who's going to pay for it? So. Well, six years down the line, still not signed anybody. And he's had lists of people, proper people, matchmakers, advisors, lists, not signed anybody. Who was he signed? Not signed anybody. If you can't sign anybody, how are you going to move forward? He needs signings. So what I what I suggested to Dennis is, I said, Dennis, why don't you just scrap it all, go out and sign six kids like Luda Bella did from 2000 Olympics, put a lot of money into it, six kids, invest in them, and then pluck them moving forward. Now, Lou DiBella did, didn't he? Because he plucked, were it Malignaggi, Jermaine Taylor? Might have that wrong. I, think, I know Jermaine Taylor were one of them. He, he signed quite a few people, Lou DiBella, when he made a big splash 20 years ago. And I said, you, sh- you need to strip it bare, Dennis, and start again and go and get some fighters. And you might find your next Clinton Woods or... Jamie McDonald or Hatton or something like that. But he ain't, has he? So he's making, doing and mending. And that that ain't going to, I don't think that's going to gonna, gonna wash moving forward. That's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. I don't think anybody's going to go there and sign. I don't think. If they would have done, why didn't they do it six years ago? Well, Do you think his heart's in it though? I don't know when you if you if you're employing eighty people across five or six businesses, you've got a lot on your plate, haven't you? And you only ain't yeah. two months a year because of tax reasons. You've a lot on your plate, aren't you? you? You're hard to pin down, aren't you? And sometimes, if you're a boxer, you want that. Uh, if you're a boxer with Dennis, you want. If say for instance, you're a, you, you, Steffi Ball's got a fight when he leaves Steffi and he goes to Dennis. If he were with Steffi, he'd have that daily contact. Daily, yeah. Because he's on shot floor and he's Steffi. He's good at what he does. But you don't, you're not going to get that with Dennis because he's on his phone all day and, and you, you ring, you'll ring up, he'll be engaged or he'll be in a meeting or he's getting pulled about left, right and centre, isn't he? So he's hard to pin down, isn't he? He might be at an airport, he might be on a plane and you can't get in touch with him. Or he might be asleep, sleeping a plane journey off it. Or he might be driving or in a meeting or having something. You can't pin him down. That's That'll be his undoing in boxing. And it has, it has done, hasn't it? Because what is, well, when were his last world champion? Stewie Hall. They really nicked that belt, didn't they, off McDonald, really, when they fell out, didn't they? So before that, Jamie McDonald, before that, who were it? Clinton Woods. I don't know. As- uh I don't know. I fear for Dennis in boxing, but he always seems to come up with something, doesn't he? But if look, he's had a fall from grace, hasn't he, from Atten and Clinton Woods, hasn't he? Right. Yeah, yeah. But he's if he puts his mind to it and gets rid of all access baggage, he could maybe do something in boxing, I think. I think he could do something. But he's gonna have to change, he's gonna have to go get some signings, some kids that are turning over. And just and just forget all this about wanting to be sat on ring apron on TV. Oh, we need TV. We need TV. Why would you need TV when you've got a stable like that? Why would you want to be messing with TV? Why? You go back to the beginning, don't you? You go back to the beginning like you did from day one. You think, well, how did I get so great? Well, when I started out with Clinton Woods, he didn't have no TV then, did he? And he didn't have anybody telling him how great he were around him, did he? You go back to the beginning and then you start again. Like Rocky Free, he goes back to the beginning, doesn't he? And he starts again. Dennis needs to go back to the beginning, start again and get some new signings. Instead of 
Well, we'll get that Perry Howe, he does a few tickets. Yeah, but he can't fight. Yeah, but we'll get him, he does tickets. Yeah, but he's not going to do anything. Is he wasting your time? All you're doing is plugging water leaks, aren't you? Plugging gaps. It, the inevitable is going to happen. It's not building it. You're not building anything, are you? You're, you're plastering over cracks in wall, aren't you? You see what I'm quite, I like to build things, mate. I like to achieve and have a go at things, whether it's cars, scrap metal, boxing channel. I, I like to build something and let it progress. And I don't think since I started with Dennis 2015, April, that he's progressed. In fact, if anything, he's got worse, Annie he? Because has gone, Liam Cameron's gone. Right, Liam Cameron were world ranked one in number 12 IBF. Sheedy were ranked or had a good ranking. He were robbed for a British title, but he's gone backwards, hasn't he? I think so. I don't know. He might say different, but he didn't know that I hadn't said to him. But I, I wish him well. I really wish him well. He gave me my big break in boxing when nobody else did. And outside of boxing, he's a fantastic guy. But in boxing, I think he's a dinosaur. That might sound harsh, Viv, but I think he's a dinosaur and I don't even think he's at the races, mate, to be honest. I don't. I don't think he's at the races. And he's show next month. Who's going to want to sit in a car in the middle of a pandemic in a car park in Sheffield? Who's going to want to do that? <laughs> Who's going to want to do that? How can you enjoy boxing doing that? I know it's something different and the summit fighters will probably sell a few tickets to the family, but I don't see how that's going to work, mate. You might just be able to get a few quid back in. You might yeah. get 10 grand back in off at show and get a bit of summer in, but is that what it's come to for Dennis? Come on. So that's my opinion of it, but it is what it is, isn't it? But we wish him well. We wish him well. So basically, do you, so basically, do you, do you think he should pack it in then now? I think No, no, I don't think he should pack it in. I think he should scrap the whole lot and start again. Forget all this Euro sport, free sports, and all this wanting to be on telly in a suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're pressing the turd up, aren't you? I think yeah. you should start again and go and get six signings and yeah. then keep a couple of what he's got and you, you start again and build these yeah. signings up. Whether you put them on a wage or forget all these ticket deals. I don't agree with ticket deals. I don't agree with them. I don't like them. Put them on a wager. You shouldn't be having to mess about with ticket deals when your promoter's got television. What's all that about, eh? you got television, what you what ticket deals now? Small hall, yeah. But when you've got telly and two and a half thousand seater arenas, what, why are fighters on ticket deals? I don't get that. I don't agree with it. Fighters have got enough on the plate. They're getting punched in head. We are, we are having to run around selling ticket deals. And you forget these white collar fighters, putting them on because they do a few tickets. What's all that about? Somebody's going to get hurt. So I don't agree with that. But we don't agree on a lot of things. But What happens with the TV but, money? Eh? What happens with the TV money? Do you know what I mean? It's like, you need to talk about these ticket deals. I'm not going to go into Obviously. TV money because that's Dennis's business, what they do with all that kind of thing. But oh. I don't agree with fighters being on ticket deals when your promoter's got a television. Because the television should be putting adverts out saying this fight's on and these kids are on from Sheffield and putting adverts on. Eurosport and free spots, but I don't see any adverts coming on. I don't see that happening. And I still see fighters on ticket deals. I don't agree with it at all. Yeah, it's not good, is it? Oh, forget the television. Start again. Because right? you're going around, in, going around in circles, doing the same thing that we were doing six years ago. And I don't, yeah. I don't call that progress, me. I don't call that progress, so... It is what it is, and everybody does things differently. Obviously, I were very naive when I started with Dennis, but I learned very quickly and absorbed, soaked it all up like a sponge and studied the game. I'm a student of the game and historian, and I think, no, I don't, I don't like that. And then I revert to my green book here. There's that. My briefcase. And, and I look at that, and I think, well... What, what's going on here? Where we get, where are we heading here? WBA, IBF, IBO, WBC, WBA, whatever. I've read all their books. And I just don't see any progress being made up there. But 
Tommy Franks headlining in a British flyweight title against Youssef, Kyle Youssef, in a fight that Tommy knocked back 18 months ago. So what's happened in the 18 months? Well, Tommy's lost his last two, hasn't he, in my opinion, but got hometown decisions. Uh, that may sound harsh, but it's true. So I don't make him a favourite in that fight. Steve Crump's already come out and said that if Tommy gets beat, they're going to bring him back. What sort of talk is that around your fighter? If Tommy gets beat, yeah, we'll bring know. him back. Why would you talk like that before <laughs> a fight? You've got a month to a fight and you're coming out with statements like that. What sort of message does that send to a fighter? He hasn't got much belief in him then, has he, Steve? Tommy Frank gets beat off Kyle Youssef. That's my opinion. I'd like to see Tommy win, actually, because it's Steffi's fight, isn't it, Youssef? But I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening at all. I don't see it happening. Steffi wouldn't have took that fight if he didn't think if you yeah. win. He's took that fight. They wanted it 18 months ago. So we're going to see, but I think it's a mistake. They, you should have took the Sonny Edwards fight, shouldn't they, on BT Sport and got paid and brung him 100%. back then after he got beat against Sonny, shouldn't they? Now, yeah. what they're doing now, 18 months later, Tommy's got worse and they're putting him in with somebody and they're saying, oh, he'll get beat. If he gets beat, we'll bring him back. Well, if you'd have backed up 18 months ago, you could have fought Sonny Edwards for British and bring him back then when he were fresher. So uh, is that progress or is it is that moving forward or going backwards? That, to me, is going backwards. But we'll see, won't we, next month, if I were right, won't we? Bad management, isn't it, really? Like you said, they had, a, they had the opportunity to go on BT Sports and they knocked it back and now... Yeah, it's bad management, isn't it, mate? Well, they know what they're doing, don't they? Dennis knows what he's doing, so he says, well, we're going to see, aren't we? But if Tommy gets beat, they're going to have eggs on the face, aren't they? Fried eggs. But we're going to see. Let's hope that Tommy wins and sticks it to Steffi Bull. But I don't think he's a favourite he in that fight. I don't think he's a favourite, no. If he wins, unless, more unless Dennis has got Unless Dennis has got uh, Terry O'Connor on the show... <laughs> <laughs> they might be able to pull a rabbit out of that. We get Terry's glasses from Specsavers, but Tommy's not a favourite in the fight, but he's a lovely kid and his trainer's a lovely man, so I wish them well. But we're going to see, aren't we? But I can't base my boxing future around Tommy Frank. Hey, hey, can you see yourself in the um, with uh, Dennis Hobson promotions um, in the future or not? Uh, maybe I could see myself working with Dennis doing something else. But not yeah. boxing. I couldn't do anything with boxing with him. No, I don't think I could. Just, just different opinions on that. Different opinions, and I'm a team player. Dennis is not a team player, but I am. So, yeah. we, like I say, you've got to wish him well, and he's a good businessman. But I won't trust him as far as I could throw him as regards boxing. But wow. moving on to the next question. Go on. Go oh, on, sorry. <laughs> so, Boxing is shambles at the moment and everybody's fighting for crumbs. Do you see fighters' purses dropping drastically in 2021 due to desperation? Yeah, I do. I do. I've already heard, I've just been talking about Dennis's show there. I've heard some uh, some figures handed about for fighters on there and I'm gasping, gasping when I heard. And But it's all over the place, isn't it? We're in the middle of a pandemic, so fighters have got to take less money. But yeah, it is what it is, isn't it? I suppose it's middle of a pandemic, and I think people like Joe Gallagher, they're trying to play poker with Eddie Earn with with slots and that. If you get offered a slot, you've got to take it. You can't try and play poker because there'll be somebody else willing to take your shot. It's like local drug dealer that goes to prison. There's somebody else willing to take his slot, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Just like that with boxing, I think that Callum Johnson's. And, and Joe Gallagher have been knocking fights back over money and has left twiddling the thumbs. And Callum's knocking on a bit now, isn't he? Which is a yeah. shame because he's a great fighter and I'm a big, big fan of his. I think he smashes Boatsy up. Callum Johnson against Yards of War, but I think both of them beat Boatsy. So that's what I think. Yeah. Well, that's all I've got for today, questions-wise. That's all you've got for today? Well, you're not done bad. It's a long one, Liz. 
Long one, is it? All right, then. Uh, is there anything you want to add? Do you want to tell me who wins between Dubois and Joyce? Dubois. Dubois. What do you think to the punditry for, at the weekend from Sky? Embarrassing, mate. Embarrassing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it's, it's, gonna, it's not gonna it's not gonna change though, is it? Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, I've got too much pulling power, it's not gonna change. And the only way it's gonna change, it's simple. Fans don't pay for the pay-per-views, and like you said, fans vote with their feet. But obviously, due to pandemic, there's no audiences, so but just don't buy the pay-per-views. If people not if people are so unhappy about it, don't watch. Simple. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. Nothing's gonna change, is it? No, you know? I agree wholeheartedly with you, mate. I agree wholeheartedly. Oh, I'd like to, like, sorry, I'd like to apologise as well for uh, getting my uh, stats wrong with the uh, Joshua World Champion thing. Sorry about that, guys. Well, you got you said it was two and it's five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Casual. <laughs> you're trying to take the box to one, aren't you? You've got to know your onions, aren't you, before you start. <laughs> I've got to think about how many world champions people have beat, so I do know what I'm on with. But all right then, mate. Well, listen, nice to speak to you, Viv. All the best to you and your lass. I hope you're well. And uh, you take care, mate. All right? Yeah, man. All the best, all the wishes. See you, Take care. Take care, mate. Bye-bye. Well, that was uh, Big V from Midlands. One of the big hitters on Birmingham scene. Uh, enjoyed that. We had a good chat there. Blow a bit of steam off, didn't we? No one's safe, are they? But like I said, if anybody's got a problem, I don't give a flying fuck. I'm going to say what I want on this channel. It's my channel, isn't it? I'm only saying what people say in their offices in boxing and in the gyms and when they're having a coffee and in pub. All right. It's all right being two-faced and whispering it. Grow some bollocks and say it. All right? I don't suffer fools gladly. Yeah, I know, but it is what it is, isn't it? So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. Don't have nightmares. <laughs>